Marvin's Money Magic Introduction Michael Jordan was born in 1963, in the slums of Brooklyn, New York. He had four siblings and his father's earnings were not sufficient to provide for the whole family. He grew up in a poor neighborhood. Exposed to mindless violence and heavy discrimination in the slums, he saw for himself only a hopeless future. His father saw in Michael a lost soul and decided to do something. He gave Michael, who was 13 years old, a piece of used clothing and asked, What do you think the value of this outfit will be? Jordan replied, Maybe one dollar. His father asked, Can you sell it for two dollars? If you can sell it, it would mean that you are a big help to your family. Jordan nodded his head. I'll try, but there's no guarantee that I'll be successful. Jordan carefully washed the cloth clean. Because they didn't have an iron to smoothen the cloth, he leveled it with a clothes brush on a flat board, and then kept it in the sun to dry. The next day, he brought the clothes to a crowded underground station. After offering it for more than six hours, Jordan finally managed to sell it for two dollars. He took the two dollar bill and ran home, delighted. After that, every day, he looked for used clothing, washed and ironed it, and sold it in the crowd. More than ten days later, his father again gave him a piece of used clothing. Can you think of a way you can sell this for twenty bucks? Aghast, Jordan said, how is that going to happen? This outfit can only fetch two dollars at the most. His father replied, why don't you try it first? There might be a way. After racking his brains for a few hours, finally, Jordan got an idea. He asked for a cousin's help to paint a picture of Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse on the garment. Then he tried to sell it in the school where the children of the rich study. Soon, a housekeeper who was there to pick his master bought that outfit for his master. The master was a little boy of only ten years. He loved it so much that he gave Jordan a five-dollar tip. Twenty-five dollars was a huge amount for Jordan, the equivalent of a month's salary of his father. When he got home, his father gave him yet another piece of used clothing. Do you think you can sell this for two hundred dollars? Jordan's eyes lit up. This time, Jordan accepted the clothes without the slightest doubt. Two months later, a popular movie actress from the movie, Charlie's Angels, Farrah Fawcett came to New York for her movie's premiere. After the press conference, Jordan managed to make his way through the tight security to reach Farrah. He politely requested her autograph on the piece of clothing his father had given him to sell. When Fawcett saw this innocent child asking for her autograph, she gladly signed it. Jordan began shouting very excitedly, This is a jersey signed by Miss Farrah Fawcett, and the selling price is $200. Jordan eventually auctioned off that iconic piece of clothing to a businessman for $1,200. Upon returning home, his father broke into tears and said, I am amazed that you did it, my child. You're really great. That night, Jordan slept alongside his father. His dad asked, Son, in your experience with selling these three pieces of clothing, what did you learn about success? Jordan replied, when there is a will, there is a way. Michael Jordan eventually went on to become a household name as one of the greatest professional basketball players of all time. A true legend. From the short story above, quite a number of lessons can be learned about being successful in business. First and foremost, anybody can be a successful businessman in whatever sphere of business one chooses. Jordan was a scrawny 13-year-old kid with no previous idea or experience of selling clothes. Yet, he went on to sell an old shirt to a rich man for 1,200 bucks. If a 13-year-old could do that, then you definitely can. Another extremely important lesson that can be learnt from the short narration above is the lesson of perseverance and endurance. Jordan carried an old piece of clothing around for two months more than 60 days, trying to sell it because his dad asked him to. The problem with most potentially brilliant businessmen is that they give up on themselves and their ideas too early. 
Other salient lessons that can be derived from this story are the lessons of boldness, self-confidence, ability to think on one's feet, spontaneity, adequate planning, seamless execution, the power of motivation, the importance of a mentor, consistency, doggedness, respect for others, the principle of wise investment, the importance of useful information, the ability to see beyond the present, the importance of adding value to one's services, the value of concise timing, the importance of customer satisfaction, the power of courtesy, and finally, the ability to strike the iron while it is hot. My name is Marvin Franklin, and I have been a salesman my entire life. On several occasions, I have been approached by several people to write a book on some of my tips on how to survive the stormy and murky waters of the sales game, and the online business world as a whole. By popular demand, I'm writing this short but highly powerful piece. Time they say waits for no man. As you are reading this right now, the world is evolving. Newer technologies are being developed to finish bulkier tasks in less time. Newer methods are being devised to increase maximum target audience ranges. In short, the world is changing every day, and the online business world is spearheading this charge of change. If you are reading this, I welcome you to the dawn of a new area in online business management, because I assure you, your view of how the online business world works would never be the same again. Turn the pages slowly. Immerse yourself fully in the information past, because I assure you, something big is about to go down. Planning To fail to prepare they say, is to prepare to fail. This axiom has never been truer than it is in the business world. In virtually every single sphere of life, it is extremely important to have a plan of some sort. While it is true that some forms of business require more elaborate and rigorous planning than some, the truth is that there is no form of business in the world that would succeed without some sort of plan in place to facilitate its success. The online business sphere is not left out of this creed. If you are going to successfully sell anything online, be it a can of soda or a huge, sprawling island, you, my friend, are going to need a viable business plan. The internet is a very big place. I mean, a mind-bogglingly, inconceivably monstrous place. The internet is virtually the whole of the world, Africa, Europe, North and South America, Asia and Australia, all compressed into your device. Now, this monstrously big place is full of amazing opportunities, chances waiting to be tapped. The only thing you need to mine this unending pot of gold? A plan. An extremely good plan. Sometimes, some of our most brilliant ideas occur to us in the strangest of places. Some people literally dream of life-changing ideas, in the middle of the night, in the plush comfort of their beds. Some people get brainwaves of awesome opportunities in the shower, some get great ideas while in traffic, some get amazing ideas on a flight while looking out through the window, and some people sit down to read about these amazing opportunities. The best thing you can do about a great idea the moment it occurs to you is to write it down. Our minds are a goldmine of great ideas, but the problem is that most of us don't write our great ideas down when they occur to us. To be a regarded as an icon in the online business world, the first step you have to take is, write that great idea down. Don't write it on a filthy scrap of paper or some random post-it cutout. Write down your ideas in places where you'll be sure to revisit them for deep pondering. Diaries and laptops are a great idea. Great minds read. An old saying says readers are leaders. If you might think is adage is meant only for high school or college students who are trying to make good grades, then you, my friend, are sorely mistaken. One of the few places in the world where you can actually find great business ideas is between the pages of a book. Amassing knowledge would do you no harm. If during the course of reading you discovered an awesome business idea, you can actually read further on such a topic. If you get a brainwave, you can read it up. If it is just an hour you can spare in a day, read. Read beneficial articles. Read business columns of blogs, online newspapers, read inspirational books and articles, just read something beneficial and make sure you gain something before you go to bed every day. A vast sea of knowledge makes an amazing entrepreneur.
Watching useful videos would also go a long way in providing you with amazingly important and concise information. Experts, in their findings have reported that a major percentage of people tend to remember more of what they watch than what they hear or read. So, watch as much inspirational, motivational, and business-oriented video clips as you can. Try to listen with a clear, open, mind, remember to jot down important points from videos watched, and try to ponder, and consequently act upon whichever points you found useful from such videos. Alternatively, audio clips are also a very wonderful option. You could plug your headphones into your ears, listen to helpful audio resources, and learn a dozen lessons. According to a lecture I watched on YouTube recently, what you will be in five years is a function of four things. What you read and watch, the kind of friends you keep and meet, decisions you make, and the actions you take. One of the most important things to do when thinking of starting an online business after making the decision of what exactly you'll be selling, or what exact service you'll be rendering, is to put logistics into consideration. In other words, you need to start thinking of how to organize your business. Of course the most important decision to reach is what exact product or service you want to sell, a decision which avid reading would help you take. Before choosing a business, it is important to put a few things into consideration. Several questions pop up at this point. How much would it cost to begin this business? What kind of skill set do I need to possess to begin? What type of environment would I be operating in? What kind of people would my typical business partners or consumers be? It is very important to ask these sort of questions to ensure that you have adequate knowledge and financial capability to begin your dream online business. It is highly important to have an in-depth understanding of the concept you want to delve into. This factor is extremely important. It would be totally foolhardy to delve into a kind of business that you are interested in, but have no understanding O0F its intricacies. Therefore, while making your research, make sure you fully understand what you would be doing when the business eventually kicks off to prevent a situation where you'll eventually be at crossroads over an order. Another important thing to consider when venturing into the tasking world of being an online business operator is adequate equipment and skills. If you're going to be writing for people for a fee, you would probably need an average device with a strong battery life. It would also be quite helpful if you are an avid reader yourself. If one is going to be venturing into the field of animation of graphics design, such an individual might actually need to attend a special institute where such a skill is being taught. Such an individual would also definitely need a fairly sophisticated computer for his work. It should be noted that it is important to get high-quality equipment to ensure delivery of top-notch services in good time. An animator, for instance, would definitely need a computer system with higher system specifications than a writer or a blogger. Job satisfaction is a very important part of planning before venturing into the world of online business. If you are good at marketing or have had prior training in it, then you can be an online marketer. If you work as a columnist or as a full-time writer, you could spend your spare time earning extra cash by writing for people online. If the visual arts have always appealed to you, then you might consider graphic design. The point is, it is very important to do what makes you happy. As a beginner, what mostly keeps you going in the world of online business is being passionate about what you do as it sometimes takes a while for the big bucks to start rolling in. So, do what makes you happy. As a matter of fact, if possible, find an online business that requires doing something you consider as a hobby, something you would gladly do even if no financial gratification is involved. You would find out that the best thing in the world is to do what you love most and get paid for it. One grievous mistake a lot of people make while planning an online business is that they do not consider their personal schedules. The truth is that you actually have a personal life, and you have several goals you are trying to achieve off the internet. Therefore, it would be a very wise decision to look very critically at your weekly and daily schedules before starting an online business. If your schedule is so tight that you are cocksure that combining an online business with it would affect your studies or work, it would be advisable to set up an online business that would operate only on weekends or when you have holidays. Striking a balance between study or work, 
online business and leisure and rest is very important. Before you delve into that online business, be certain that it wouldn't have any adverse effects on your personal life, or else you might end up losing on both sides, on the internet and offline. Setting your priorities right and striking that delicate balance is so important that it cannot be overemphasized. As a successful online salesman, over the years, I have come to understand the immense importance of reaching out to a maximum target audience. So, before the business begins at all, it is very important to have a plan to establish a formidable online presence. If the social media would be your weapon, if it would be your own personal website or blog, think very deeply about a mechanism with which you can effectively reach out to as many internet users as possible. It is very important to plan on how to keep the business going once it's started by mapping out how the stream of consumers would remain constant as much as possible. So, you've got a fabulous business idea, you've finalized on what you would be selling, and you have ascertained that you have the proper training or adequate talent to carry out the job as flawlessly as possible. You have also confirmed that you have the right equipment and you have devised a plan on how to keep your online business sustained with the right online presence. You have ascertained that you have an in-depth understanding of the concept of the business you are delving into, and you've also confirmed that you will always find time in your busy schedule to deliver your online service within a reasonable time frame. Most importantly, you have carried out a mental evaluation, and you have decided that you are actually passionate about what you want to do. Amazing. It's time to talk about the stage after planning then. Starting the business. Starting your business. After flawless planning, the next most important stage in creating your dream online business is actually taking that huge quantum leap and officially